Okay, now we're going to talk about diagnosing bone cancer. Um, most of the time people go to the vet because their dog is limping or there's some sort of pain and so your vet has taken an x-ray and in a large percentage of cases you can actually diagnose osteosarcoma from an x-ray because there's certain locations that we see it. The most common is the distal radius which is right above the wrist joint, uh, if, if you were a person, right there. The other place in large breed dogs is the proximal humerus which is right up close to the shoulder, so it's the upper arm bone uh, right near the shoulder blade. And as far as the back legs, it tends to be proximal tibia or distal femur, which is right below or right above the kneecap. Now some dogs will get it in different locations. You can actually have it show up for the first time in the spine or in the face or in other joints uh, like elbow itself. That would be abnormal and in that case there might be an indication to do uh, either a fine needle aspirate or a bone biopsy first. A fine needle aspirate is actually fairly easy to perform. Your vet has to just take a, a fairly large gauge needle and try to put it to the site where he can see on the x-ray and get some cells out and send them to the lab. If that comes back positive then you have your answer. You can sometimes get a false negative because you just can't get deep enough with that sort of needle. The other type of traditional bone biopsy is taking a very uh, a wider um, uh, wider instrument, I guess I should say, to go all the way through the cortex of the bone, all the way through the center of the bone to the other side to take a wide enough area of tissue to try to get a diagnosis. Now in some cases we don't do that because it could be more dangerous to the dog because you can get a pathologic fracture by disrupting the bone in that manner. Depending on where you live, your veterinarian may decide it's important to do that or may not. If you live in an area of the country like the Midwest around Wisconsin, there is a fungal disease called blastomycosis that can look similar on the x-ray. Uh, in the southwest, they have something called valley fever that can look similar. There's also histoplasmosis that you might see closer to the east coast. So if your vet feels like it could also be a fungal infection versus bone cancer, then it makes sense to me to take a bone biopsy because if it was that disease, you could actually treat it without amputation. Although it is true that when you take the biopsy sample of the bone, that does not co correlate with survival. You can have a dog that has high-grade bone cancer as well as low-grade bone cancer do just the same or sometimes the high-grade dogs live longer than the low-grade dogs. It is important though to try to take a lymph node if possible because the lymph node, if there's cancer in the lymph node at the time, that is a decreased prognostic indicator. That doesn't mean you shouldn't go ahead and do chemo on your dog or take the leg off, but it just does indicate that the cancer has already spread um, beyond the leg and not just into the lungs. Most dogs, uh, over 90% of them already have cancer cells in the lungs at the time. You just can't see them. We do recommend that you take chest x-rays, a 3 view chest x-ray before amputation to look for those dogs. If you don't see bone cancer though, that doesn't mean it won't come there later on. So in summary, depending on what part of the country you live and where the cancer looks on the x-ray, if your dog has a suspicious spot maybe in the elbow where we don't normally see bone cancer or if you live in a certain part of the country your vet might want to go ahead and do a fine needle or bone biopsy. Otherwise they might just send the x-ray out to a specialist who reads it and says yes looks like bone cancer and then go ahead and proceed to amputation.